we have with us today dr angel ratnabai uh, she will uh, she will talk about ict content pedagogy integration uh, or you can say it technology content and pedagogy integration so where we are also talking about technology the content to be taught and the pedagogy the way it has to be taught the integration of all of it so this session i will look forward to you ma'am for the interaction and the session and a lot of learning from you as always we welcome you towards this session and the session is over to you dr angel yeah good morning to everyone i think i'm i'm audible yes ma'am we yes, can yes. hear you yeah a uh, very good morning to everyone i think this group is completely from northeast and i could see some familiar faces uh, whom we have met already uh, good morning ashok sir immediately i could see ashok sir's picture yes and yes. there are many more faces we are uh, familiar with but it's nice meeting all of you again and uh, the new participants who are joining this srg group welcome to everyone and to start with today uh, we are going to discuss about um ict pedagogy integration in teaching learning so let me share my screen and start the session and i request everyone to be part of the session and also be actively participating in the session during the activity so that it will help us to learn from each other okay I uh, hope my screen is visible. Can somebody confirm? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. It is visible. Right, right. Uh, so this is what we are going to uh, discuss today when we are going to talk about the integration of technology in teaching learning. So there are a few points of discussion which we are going to do is. Uh, we are just going to recall what is ICT. We all are here as SRGs. having some background of technology and understanding of ict so we are just going to re recall what is our understanding of ict and also we want to uh, have a common platform if you have already attended the sessions earlier srgs you would have been listening to this but still it has been a year long now to refresh ourselves and just recall what is ict uh, so that we can discuss further on a common ground and also we need to try to put ourselves into a uh, reflection whether technology can really support and uh, how it supports like no so we need to think about why we need this technology and our main focus will be on how to integrate where we will be learning a few of the things and also safety and security aspects of using technology part and parcel whenever we talk about integration but uh, safety and security i am not going to deal it in detail because there is a separate session going to be there but when and where uh, it comes in the context i'll be also taking up this points for discussion so when we move ahead to try to understand what is ict so i would request uh, like all of you to be part of an activity so i just wanted to demonstrate some tool as well and also we will be doing an activity so this is a app called like a, it's a, a web based freemium tool called padlet i how many of you are aware of this tool earlier can you please raise your hands how many of you know about this tool just can you raise your virtual hands okay i don't see anybody's hand right now on the screen so let me just move over a more ahead thinking that you are not aware of so that i, I can take from okay so now uh, my activity is i wanted to know what is your understanding of ict so that's what i wanted to know now before i start this session so when i wanted to know right now all of you are um, uh, all of you are in this session participating from different places right so when i wanted to yeah uh, maybe it's not very clear how many of you know about the tool called padlet right 
So when when we are now like usually what happens in our normal classroom is when you wanted to know what people think, we will ask the question and ask the participants to answer. Right? That's how the interaction happens. But now we are in online mode. You are uh, all sitting in different places, and around a uh, hundred plus participants are there. So how do I make you all to interact? So one way I can ask you is, can you explain one by one? what is your understanding of icit if i start asking and everyone start telling for 100 people to speak out it will take at least this full session and we will not be able to discuss anything further right if i tell okay everyone write in the chat box it will be keep on running in the chat box where i'll not be able to see it in a holistic manner so what i'm going to do now is i wanted to know what is your understanding so for that i'm going to conduct an activity online using this tool called padlet so padlet is one of the collaboration tool which can be used but it has restriction it is a freemium tool freemium means it will allow free for some time after that you will be asked to pay so this particular tool allows only you to conduct five type five activities after which if i like wanted to make a new padlet it will say you have to join you have to pay but it i am using this particular thing for last five years so there is a possibility that you can reuse even without payment that's a, a beauty of technology that we can keep reusing so i don't need this because once i finish my activity i can take a backup like for example this i have conducted 14 days back as an activity okay so i have got you can see like i asked this question to many and around 62 plus people have given their responses and uh, i have been able to take all their responses now it's already done so i don't need to continue uh, this keeping this in a backup so what i can do is i can just take a backup of this and delete this and redo an activity this is one way you can redo it so uh, when i go to share i can see here i can save it as a pdf and i can describe what way of pdf so it's trying to uh, publish it once it is published this whole data will be available with me because the activity is already complete okay so once the pdf is ready i can take it keep it with me and recreate a new activity for this particular session so this particular tool allows you to take a backup and delete it so you can see the way it came you can see the whatever they have written whatever time they wrote you can see even the date and time it gets recorded whenever you conduct with your students also you can tell them to do any of this content like this and then you save it in your um system itself okay so that's a possibility that we can do now i have downloaded it so i don't need this anymore so what i can do is just go and delete this part when i delete it it's just asking the code okay so i can see now i have only four i can make a new one so i'm just going to make a new padlet so when i make a new padlet first thing which i have to think about is what is the activity i'm going to conduct what is my activity now i have a question to all of you what is your understanding or how will you explain icit so i wanted all of your responses to be collected for this question that's my content okay and when i want to collect i need to select the template how do i want to collect so if i say like i if i select this template all your answers will appear like a wall in which all of you are writing all these are collaborative walls but if you see here the content will get organized like this this one one by one answer will be running now 100 plus participants are there so keeping in the size of uh, the classroom in con uh, consideration this is not a appropriate uh, template because 100 text will be running one by one on top, from bottom to top which will be difficult for me to read what they are writing so grid also if you see the shelf part shelf is something when you want to uh, collect information like if my question has been give your examples and non examples of icit i can give example and give non example give space so there will be a divider where you keep adding your answer to one particular part but now my question is not like that okay so in case if i wanted to 
collect some, my question is content is like that, I can use this. Right now for my content, only wall and grid are suitable templates. But in grid, you can see there is a lot of space which, which will be getting answers occupied in rows and columns and space will be waste. Some person may write a long post, some person will write a smaller post. So this kind of space will be unnecessarily getting wasted. So it's like when 100 documents I need to see, it is better to use a wall. So I'm selecting a template based on my content based on the context, context here refers to the number of participants. And I know that I'm, I'm selecting this Padlet for this activity because I know everyone are having internet and you have a device with you. Now, I'm going to create the Padlet. So when I wanted to create, I can write here, what is my question? How, what, what does ICT? Refer to. So this is the question of mine. I can also write the description, share your responses in 100 words, supported with images or links, etc. Okay, I can give details. So I can also add an icon because the space is right now empty. I can just think of some icon or you can also add a relevant of your own images. So you can see the moment I select this uh, image, it comes on this place. So this is just a, a kind of app icon that will give what is your activity about. So I've added icon now. It also asks whether you can use a URL. So you can see the URL now. If I want to share this, this is a very difficult thing for you to remember. So what I can do, Adlet is the website. This is my account number and I can write this is activity one, okay? So now my URL will be like this. So I can go and I can see a wallpaper. These are all for beautification. I can select any wallpaper. There are a lot of things to use it. You can select anything according to your need or you can also add your own wallpaper. Font size, color schemes, all this can be set. And you also need to know who is posting it. So if you want to give a space, you can tell them, you can give your name in the attribution part. And I can also decide whose post will appear first, whether new post will go down or new post will appear first. So since I will be reading one by one, the older post can go down. So I'm selecting all the new posts should appear first. And we also can give option for each person to come in. What happens in face-to-face -face class when people are going to be in one room, if somebody says something and others don't agree with that, they will immediately say that, no, no, I don't agree. If somebody uh, wants to appreciate, at least there will be some kind of a non-verbal communication also. So we can give option for people to comment on each other's posts. You can also give reaction. Now for this, I'm not going to evaluate. So I'm just going to tell them to give you likes. If you like the post, give likes. So that's a kind of participation we can think about during our uh, ICT integration. And these are very important points. Many times when you do online, people try to misbehave also. Children like tend to write whatever they want, which, which is not very pleasing in the classroom. So for content filtering, there are options in this portal. Safety and security is not always a separate thing. Sometimes it's inbuilt. We should use the features. Here, these are two features. One is like... You can also ensure you know that if it is a unknown group, if you are making them to join and write without their names, there are two ways participants can write their answers with login, without login. With login, you will come to know who has written. So in that case, you will be able to find out if there is anything mischief. So people will also be aware and careful. But when you keep open, right now, I'm not asking you to log in. All of 100 people are going to write. So in this case, I can use two options also, like when I say require approval, one by one response will be only seen to me, only when I approve it will be seen to others. But keep, keeping the time in view, I'm not going to enable this now. And uh, filtering, this is very nice uh, feature. If you write any wrong words, it will automatically replace with an emoji. It will not display. So there is a kind of artificial intelligence built in this uh, system where it will identify these are all not words which are 
proper to be publicly displayed. So it will automatically be placed with emojis. Okay, so these are the things so I will enable this. So now my activity is first created. I am moving. Now you can see my question. You can see now my URL also changed. Padlet, Angel Ratnabai. I gave changed it as 81. So it is changed now. So now people can start posting. So how now my first level is my development is over. Now I should implement, right? I want you to answer to this question. So how do I share this link with you? So I can see here there are multiple options to share. One is you can just copy this link and share it. You can use QR code. So, but we need to think about which one to use, which is appropriate. For example, now we are all online. So the best thing would be to copy the link and put it in your chat box where you can access. But if you're in a face-to-face -face mode and still you wanted to conduct this activity, the best thing would be QR code because you can type print a QR code and paste it and tell students, teachers to really take the mobile, go and then uh, easily scan it and then go because it would be difficult again to send the links. Because right now we are in Zoom and we have an option to send the link in chat box. I will choose to use the link. You can, if you're going to keep this as an open activity where you are having your classroom blog or website, you can use this third option. And if you wanted to have a closed group, you don't want to make it public, you can send to their mail. If you're conducting this session on social media, you can use it with social media options. But right now, since this is a very op, um, feasible one, I have copied the link. I have placed the link in your chat box. So now I request all of you to click on the link, come to this particular page. You will be seeing this wall, okay? And you will see a plus symbol. Click on this plus symbol. First, write your name on the subject. And at the bottom, you can type your response. If you wanted to add your picture, you can take a photo with the camera, or you can also add links from website which talks about it, then just publish. So your answer will appear like this. Okay, so can we start the activity? I request everyone to participate. Click on the link, which is given in the chat box. In chat box, you can find a link here. Click on the link. You will get the page and then start doing it. Uh, ben, sir, I request not to put other links right now. Kindly, uh, please delete it because it will confuse people which link to copy because this is an activity everyone is doing. So kindly, please use the link with my name, Angel. So I'm reposting the link. Kindly use the link and uh, submit your response. I could see three persons already have submitted. So sir has put his photo also. So I would like to give a like to him. Others also can comment on each other. So they are all very quick. So I'm going to give a like to all of you. Those who have posted it very quickly. I can see only 25 participants participating. There are 100 plus participants. All of you should try. If you don't participate, it will not help you to understand how it works. Very good. One of the person has commented on others also. So you can try commenting. You can try giving likes to others. Please try working on to try to at least give one comment and one like minimum. Uh, Benry, sir or madam, I'm sorry, I'm not able to make out. Uh, they have not given the right answer. So I am just giving, give the answer to the question. When somebody is not participating, we can even write like that. Right? Many people have not added your name. So please go to edit, click on your post, click on edit and type your name again. 
add your names. Try to add your photographs. Yeah. I'll give you uh, one more minute. Madam Angel. Yes, sir. Ma'am, I'm not uh, getting how to uh, get into this, the steps. Sir, I have, are you able to access this link in the screen, in the chat box? Can you see this link in the chat box, sir? Uh -huh. So we have to, I mean. Uh... Click on the link. Just click on the link. You will land up in this page. Click on the link. Uh, Are you able to access the chat box? Oh, access the chat box. Okay. okay. It's clickable, ma'am. Ha. Huh. In the Zoom only, you will be getting the link. Zoom chat box, not on WhatsApp. Okay. Uh, this was joining. Okay. So the plus, you have to, uh, you know, tap on the plus. Yeah, plus click on the plus and then you have to add your name here in the subject and then write your response in the box and publish. You can also change your background to any color so that you can, all of you, those who have submitted, try to edit your post. Thanks for the photograph. <laughs> Yeah, we could see beautiful faces coming up. Thank you. A request to keep your mic on mute. Somebody's mic is on. Hello, ma'am. Yes. Hello. Hello. I have yes, given, yes. I have given, yeah, I have given my response, but I couldn't see myself. You couldn't see myself. You have to see, scroll and see down because because it would have gone down, right? The recent ones will be at the top. Okay, okay. Let me try. Mm. Recent ones will be at the top. So you can please change your names. Most of you have written only anonymous. You have not added your name. Right. Okay. Uh, I think like others who are still doing it, kindly finish it off so that we'll be able to see all your responses. So we should be able to make out who is writing the response. So kindly add your name. Now you can see here, many of you are coming as like, some of you have added your name. Some, most of yours is showing as anonymous. Why? Why is it showing anonymous? Because you have not logged in into the site. Okay? You have not logged in and then you are not writing your responses. But you can see here. Okay. You can see here the name is appearing directly. Instead of anonymous, for few people alone, the name is appearing directly. Right? You can see some places only two, three people's name is appearing. Why? Because like Padi sir's name is coming here. Because he has, he may have joined Padlet already. So when he has opened, he is opening through his account. So whenever you are conducting in your classroom, it is better to make your students register in this site and then start participating continuously so that you will come to know Kaushik sir has already joined so his name is appearing so it is easy to make out no need to tell them to write their name again even though I told many people have not written your names so students may also do this so the best thing when you are doing in your classes to tell them to join first Padlet and then respond so your their name will automatically come here okay 
So when you, right now, I'm not very specific of who is writing what. So that is why we, I'm not bothered, okay? Right now, I can see around uh, 66 participants have given your responses. That's great. Uh, at least more than 50% of the participants are attending to the session, okay? So let's see how many of you are still completing it. Who are not completing it? Let's see at the end. Very good. So now let's move on to the our back to the discussion on what is ICT. So I could see that there are several responses. Some of you have returned. It's just in ICT refers to integration of ICT. Okay. Some people are writing that. ICT refer to the use of technology for transacting content to the learners. Some people are writing that it helps in teaching process. Some of you have written in terms of it will create, uh, store and manage information. Some of you are writing it's about the devices, right? You can see all SRGs are not having a uniform understanding. We are all having different understandings and with ourselves. Because of which, when we go back to teachers and start telling, we may all have different answers, right? So let's come back to here to try to understand in a common way what is ICT. So all of us are very much aware, whatever answers you have given is all not wrong, but it is all only a partial responses. May I request somebody's mic is on. Uh, so can I request everyone to keep your mic on mute so that it doesn't disturb our others. Thank you. So when you see here, when everyone participated in this activity, what happened? Let's take this example. So what did I first do? I created this digital information, this Padlet activity, which is actually having the information in the digital form, right? So the very first step which I did is creating the digital information. And I stored it in an URL, which can be accessed anytime, right? I just send the URL to you. All of you were able to access it. You were all able to retrieve that page. So when it comes to the first step, when I create a information in the digital form, I'm able to store that in a digital form. Because I have stored it in digital form, it is possible for all of you to retrieve it. Just imagine if I have written this question in a paper with me. Is it possible for you to now access it, retrieve it? It's not possible, right? If it is in paper, it will not be possible for you. So right now, that's one of the things that I could do with this activity. It's not about just retrieving. You were all able to add to it. You were all able to give response to it. So what is happening, it's not just what I created. It was modified with all your responses. So there was a lot of manipulation. Even when you wrote it first, some of you were writing first your name. Some of you are right now asking, where should I add my name? So again, you are able to edit it. So the fourth thing that is possible when the information is in digital form is manipulation. You can cut, paste, add, delete. All these are possible, right? And the fifth thing is sending and receiving. We are all sitting in different physical space. I am able to send a question to you through a digital link. You are able to respond, which I'm able to see from you. So that is what ICT means. When you say like, it's not just a single thing or something like that. When UNESCO defines, UNESCO defines ICT as any software, any hardware, any process or a combination or a single or a combination of uh, things which can create, store, retrieve, manipulate, send and receive digital information can be called as ICT. In this particular case, if you see, I have created this digital, this digital activity using a Padlet. So Padlet is the software I have used. But for doing this complete, to send and receive, I have used the Zoom chat box, right? Zoom chat box is the way I have got it sent. I'm able to receive the data. Your information is received again in the Padlet itself. And this is, was all possible because every one of us has a hardware, a mobile or a desktop with us, and we all have internet connection. 
right? So now, how do I define ICT in this case? A combination of Padlet, Zoom, your device, and internet all together has formed the ICT. I cannot do only with one thing. I cannot do everything. If I created a padlet and if I don't have a way to send it to you, then it is not possible to reach you at all, right? So that is how ICT is defined as per the UNESCO. So it can be anything that will be able to do all the six. So we need to be very clear. So using a presentation, I cannot, like if I have taken this session face to face, showing the same presentation on the screen, I cannot claim I'm using techno ICT, but I can say I'm using technology, but I cannot use the word ICT. But right now when I'm using in Zoom, I have not showed anything. Everything is getting communicated to you through the digital information itself. So now I can say I'm using technology. So let's all have the same understanding. So it is not like today something may be in the form, for example, you have an iPhone, but if you're not using it, if you don't have internet connection in that, if you're not able to use it, only you're using it for calling, then it doesn't mean that you are using it as an ICT tool. So the conclusion is, it is not that this, uh, the, the device or the software that decides whether it is ICT, but it is the way how we use will decide whether it is an ICT tool or not. Let's move on to why, okay? So I would like to just listen to all of you why or how ICT supports you. So let's, we are going to now do a activity again. So you can see that this activity I have conducted already. So I have already created it multiple times. So you can see I have done this activity 59 times. Last time, how did I do? That was a freemium tool. So I took a backup because it allows only five times to use it. So now this is a tool which called Mentimeter. This you can register yourself as a teacher, which will give you uh, free access for multiple activities. Otherwise, it's again restricted. But for teachers, it is open. So you need to register yourself as a teacher in this account. So you can see, like I have conducted 58 times. So I want to see what happened in the, my 45th session. So you can see the responses of my uh, resource participants in the 45th workshop. There were 32 people who participated and their responses are collected like this. So now what we are going to do, a new session I wanted to conduct. So already something is there. So I want to reset it, just reset the result. So I'll get a fresh page now to start the session. So again, here I can do multiple ways. I'm just again going to give you a link in the chat box. So I have put a link in chat box. All of you will click on this link. When you click, okay. please uh, click on this link or copy this link and paste it on a screen. I can just type it. You will get a question with three box like this. How can ICT support your teaching and learning? Write your answers. Three answers. For example, ICT will make my work easy. If you feel like that, write only the word easy. Don't write sentence. Okay. So like this three things, which is the benefit of ICT, type it and submit your response. Okay. I could see one person has already submitted. So let us see how many of you are able to participate. Please keep observing the screen after you submit. Four of them have submitted, very good. Seven, eight, nine, 11, 13. Very quick, very good. I've got already responses, nearly 18% have submitted your response. Let us keep watching. Twenty-seven. I can see the counter here. So those who have finished, kindly please observe what's happening on the screen. Thirty-five. 
So at least let's wait for 60 people to respond and then continue the discussion. But I request everyone to participate. So I could see in the last activity, 76 people have participated. So now let's see. There are around 25 people not participating. Yeah, answers are now quickly coming on the screen. I've got responses from 60 participants. That's a good number. So let's start the discussion. Others can continue to uh, keep submitting your response. Okay, so we have 100 participants. I think all of you should be able to submit. So you can see now what was happening on the screen. Can we listen? Can anyone tell me what was happening on the screen? You can open your mic and speak. Somebody is asking a question like, is there an option to find out which one to make it bold, larger than others? Okay. Yeah. Word cloud is getting formed. Very good. Somebody can, you can open your mic and speak. It is synchronizing every time. The word is submitted. It is immediately dynamic. It's synchronizing every minute. Very good. What else you could observe in the screen? All the responses. Uh, the, answer given by most, the answer given by most of the participants are becoming bold. Okay. Is it becoming bold alone or size? from many participants. It's becoming bold alone or Okay. Color is also changing. Color is also changing. Sarita, ma'am, your audio is not clear. Yeah. You can repeat what you of ideas from many participants. Sharing of ideas from many participants. Sharing of ideas. Good. Good. It is brainstorming. It helps you to brainstorm. Okay. Words are moving. Interaction is maximum. Very good. So I could see already 71 participants submitted. Okay. What else? Kenny, sir, have you submitted your response? How did you feel when you saw the response on the screen? It's, uh, I can see that it's dynamic and it's storing all the information. And we can see all at a glimpse. And it's keep on okay. changing. So it's nice. It's nice, very good. But what did you, when your res response came on the screen, what did you feel? Uh, I feel excited to see my answers on the screen because uh, uh, it though it doesn't appear as a big word, it's it's a smaller one because uh, it's uh, random. I think the, the the application is taking random words, whichever uh, come first or come last, it appears as a big one. But I feel excited when I see my answer on the screen. Good, good. See, we are all adults of 30 more, like at least I think like we must be all of them more than 30 years, right? When uh, was this exciting to us? Did it excite us? How many of you feel that this was making me to a little bit get excitement? At least it made you to get interested to just see this. Can you just put up your virtual arms? How many of you felt like just being participating in this activity made you to have a smile, made you to feel like something I'm doing in the session? Is, was there anything like that? How many of you felt that? Just raise your virtual hand. Yeah. 
I could see at least some of you giving like, yes, right? Many of you felt like it made you to participate. See, there is a difference that could make it. If I'm just using PowerPoint in most of the online session, the resource person use a presentation and then keep talking, keep presenting, right? Is that really exciting or activities like this where you are also made part of it will be exciting. So let's question ourselves and answer ourselves. Because we have been taking part in multiple online sessions nowadays, right? When technology has potential to make a change, but technology, the way the technology uses only brings really interest in the class. I could see many of you have written, you in the central part is coming as interesting. The central part is written because the largest font, somebody has asked why fonts are large and small. What this, this particular software does is it will take count of the frequency of the words. Many people have written interesting. So that is why that particular word is larger in size. Okay. So it uh, tries to help the presenter because if I want to collect this response, like you can see 73 people into three words. So all the words, if I collect, it will be difficult for me to analyze and find which is the very, uh, which are the aspects which everyone is trying to tell. This kind of analysis will take a lot of time, but now technology is supporting me, making my work easier. You have many of you have written technology can help you to make work easy. Has it not made my work easy now? I could get all your responses in a very short time. Not just the responses, it has collated, analyzed and given me the output also, which has made my work really easy. Now I know in this group of 100 people, out of 73 people, most of them feel technology makes interesting the class it helps you to be uh, easier the class easier it also engages it is attractive these are the main words effective joyful lively so this is all the major things you all of you feel that ICT can help us with so one example now what's happening is this use of using this software in this particular session has made my work easier it has captured your interest. It has also made you to get engaged instead of just keeping the video and audio off and then doing some other work. At least now I'm sure 73 people out of 100 plus people are attentive in this session. So it's a very good number. At least 75 percentage of the participants are participating in an online activity. Because most of the online classes right now, we don't know what the other people are doing. Are they really listening to us? It looks like I'm talking to a computer. But now I'm so encouraged as a presenter that my people are listening to me. So I need to take effort to, I cannot simply skip and do some session and go. There are people investing time, right? So these are some of the feedbacks mechanisms also makes this session really lively. Right. So it's very important for us to use technology in our classroom to make this happen. Many of us may believe that I can teach my subject better than using technology. Why should I waste my time to learn technology newly? But these are some of the things which we cannot do by ourselves physically. Right. I could have conducted this activity even in the classroom. Like uh, asking everyone to take a paper, write the three things and give it. But again, collecting the paper, reading everyone's response, collating it would have taken my time. So whenever you wanted to reduce your time, let's use technology. Whenever you want to create interest, let's use technology. When you wanted to, when you feel that there is no possibility of engagement, because in a physical classroom, we would have done a lot of activities. So when there is a possibility that you can engage through technology, use technology, right? When we have written something as effective, I would like to take you through few examples which can tell us how technology can be really made effective only if the teacher integrates it in a proper manner, okay? So some of you who have been in yesterday maths group, you would have already listened about GeoGebra. 
but other uh, subject people would have not listened about this software. So I'm going to take some examples of what you have learned in all these days and then just bring out the importance of this ICT file. Okay, so GeoGebra is not a tool only for mathematics. It is also helpful for people learning physics and chemistry and all that. So, for example, let me take now a maths activity. All of us have studied uh, mathematics till minimum class seven, and we would have learned this sum of the interior angles of a triangle is 180 degrees. This is a theorem which we would have learned in our school. Right? Many times this was taught to us as a fixed theorem. Learn this, memorize it. But some people also make effort to draw this on the board, use the um, uh, protractor on the board, try to measure and show to the students that it's 180 degrees. Mm -hmm. The way I'm going to show you now, in this manner, right? Teacher draws the triangle on a board. Then the try using a kind of a projector, they measure, tell them to write and then measure total and show this is 180 degrees. But when we ask students, do you believe that this is true for all triangles? Many students do not carry that generalization because teacher showed only one triangle. I'm not sure. I memorized the thing. Some teachers, what they do is they do activity in the classroom, telling every student to take up a paper cut the triangle out of it and then measure themselves and find the angle, some of the angles. Even at that case, we are giving an experience to a student only with 40, 50 triangles. So the generalization when it comes, it's for countable, not only a countable triangle for any triangle is not very clear to a student. So when there is something which we wanted to show, we cannot come and take, take lakhs of triangle and show to the student. So in that situation, to make your classroom more effective, we can use tools like this. Here you can see it's a dynamic tool. We use induction method to show them. So I say now triangle one, angle is 180 degree. I'm now changing it to triangle two. Angle is 180 degree. I'm changing to triangle three, 180 degree. Four, 180 degree. Five, 180 degree. Let me keep changing. Can you count how many triangles I have formed? Is it possible for a student to count? You can see every move is a new triangle. So I can see any way you change. However, whatever type you change, 180 remains same. Right? 180 remains same. So when you show this, the student will get that generalization in the mind. And also... GeoGebra is a tool which can be used for teaching this. But what kind of, this is a kind of a software you have chosen now to teach. But what is the format you will use depending on your content? Now, if you want to teach this theorem, you can use this where you are showing one, two, three. But in case you wanted to show them through an activity, you have also told them to in the classroom, like you take all the angles and keep it on your, we usually do an activity like this, right? We tell them now, take the angles and then form, show interior angles. I'm just breaking it. I'm just trying to bring that together as, and this is a paper cutting activity, which we do in our classroom. Many times when we do a paper cutting, the teacher doesn't show with the chart paper. It is not visible to the student because of the classroom size. Can we use technology where it is helps to reach students? So you can see it's a very simple activity. I'm only trying to prove once again by paper cutting activity. Same thing, 180 degree. Initially, you took different triangles. So this is how we teach in the classroom. This is what we learned in BA. Don't use only one method to teach a particular topic. But technology can be used in various ways like this to show, okay, you can also, now once you show, now you tell the students, okay, can you all take your own paper, try to do this. This will help a student to see what they are supposed to do and then do it. This is one another format of the same activity, same content, right? This is to verify. You, you can think about your learning outcome. This is to derive 
the sum of interior angles, the triangle is 180 degree. But this is to verify whether some of the interior angles is 180 degree. So according to your learning outcome, you can change your format. If you feel that I'm just going to use it for an assessment purpose, then you have to use it in a different one. So this is how there are, see, for single triangle, there are various formats of thing which you can choose according to your content. So let me take one more example to bring the effectiveness part, right? Uh, some of you must have learned yesterday about this FET as a tool, which has a lot of simulation. Again, it's not only for science. It has simulations for mathematics. It has simulations for chemistry. It has simulation for earth science, biology, and all that. So I'm going to take an example of um, chemistry. And I'm just going to show you something like how we can use it in a pedagogical way in our classroom, okay? So all of us have learned pH value, right? So can I ask a question? If I think there are science teachers in this group, can you tell me what is the pH value of blood, human blood? Any science teacher? What is the pH value of human blood? It's sorry, ma'am. Ma'am. Yes, sir. Uh, apart, apart from this, can I ask one question regarding the GeoGebra? Uh, yeah. Sir, can I take the, the question at the end? Can I take the question at the end? Yeah, yeah, sure. I'll, I'll surely keep time for sure, you. Can put the questions in the chat box simultaneously also, so that we'll take all the questions for discussion. Sure, sir. Uh, 7.4, 7, 6.5, 7.4. So there is 7.2. There is a lot of various answers which is coming up on the chat box. It is around 7. Okay. So because it will differ from people person to person also, right? pH value will not be a standard, but there is something, a kind of a standard range, which should be within this range. So 7.35 to 7.4. So can we all test now whether our like a blood is 7.5? Will we tell the student now, all of you take a pin, put it and then test it out? So we'll not surely tell to a student of class six or seven to do that. So. When it is bled, we can tell them, take a starch, water, do it, take a soap or liquid, do it. These are things which is possible. But we also need to know about our, where the pH value is getting applied in our human body. Because pH value of the body, uh, human blood makes a lot of impact on the health. So when we are talking about human, uh, when we talk about certain things, we try to avoid many things because we can't do it as an experiment right in the classroom okay so right now what we can do is such kind of activities we can bring it as a simulation so right now in this activity since we cannot do with blood like you can tell the, in the classroom feasible things you can tell take water and tell the student to just measure the ph value take some liquids and test the human uh, ph value but whatever is not possible with the it's not in the possible in the sense it's possible to pinch uh, uh, peers and take blood and do it but it is not a good thing to tell to a seventh standard student so which is not possible to conduct in a classroom we can take it for ourselves to check it out Okay, so now I'm selecting blood. I'm taking in my container a little blood. I'm trying to measure my pH value. So it's around 7.4. Most of you have given your right answer. So now my question to the teacher is, what will happen if I add water to this blood? What will happen to the pH value? Can I get your responses? What do you think? Whether pH value will increase, decrease, it will stay constant. Decrease, okay. Any other responses? You can open your mic and speak also. Decrease, decrease, okay. So two, three responses are decreasing, okay. Remind neutral. Why it will decrease? Anyone can give me a response. Why it will decrease? 
some of you are telling decrease. Why it will decrease? Ma'am, because the pH of water is seven and it's neutral. So when we are adding adding that, so when it combines with blood, it becomes diluted. So it should ideally decrease. Okay. So can we check it whether it's really decreasing? So I'm just trying to add water. Can you see where, what is happening? <coughs> what is happening to the pH value? It is decreasing. Decreasing. It's decreasing. Now. So the sir's response was, when you add water, it will get diluted and then it will decrease. So can we come to a conclusion? Whenever you take any solution and add water, the pH value will decrease. Can we come to that conclusion based on this experiment? Because it's getting diluted. So if I take, for example, let me now take uh, chicken soup, okay? <coughs> What is pH value here? 5.8. So from the previous experiment, when you add water, it gets diluted and it should decrease. Is that will the same thing here also? No, ma'am. <coughs> what? I think the pH value of water is higher than the pH value of chicken, so it will increase. I'm sorry. So most of you are saying that because it's diluted, it's decreasing, whether that's a right response. So doing this experiment in a classroom, taking so many solutions and trying out, so you can tell the students, so where, that's what we call it as the flip learning. You can tell the students to do at this home, try out each and every solution. Like for example, sir was telling it will increase. I'm just trying it you can see it's increasing, right? So what is happening? So let them try to check out various things. Let me take coffee. So what is the pH value of coffee now? Coffee is five. So, so what is expected? When it is five, pH value of water is seven, whether it will increase or decrease. Let them try to think like this. So when we come to a classroom, we don't get so much of time to give that exploration. So students can be asked to do that at home, tell them to write their observations, trying out so many things. Now bring their observations to the classroom. And then let's start discussing in the classroom why it happens. It is not because of just dilution. There is one point which Sir said, there is something related to your pH value of water. And it's always not the response that because pH value of water is higher than this, it gets increased or lesser than this, it decreases. But it is about the chemical reaction that happens when you add water to this. There is H2O because of that hydrogen ion, some reaction is happening because of which the solution is happening. Maybe your content is not to talk about pH value, value as a base, but you're going to bring out some reaction that's happening at the larger, uh, higher class. But this could be a base level to explore. Okay, so this is how simulations has to be used. It's not always simulation should be used in the classroom. When we say ICT integration, it is not always you showing, a teacher showing in the classroom. It can be used. We all know now all the students have a mobile with them. Students have internet connection with them, maybe very poor connection. At least if I say all, it may be not applicable in Northeast. At least 50 percentage of students may have internet connection and with the device. Can we try to use that at least as a potential thing? Let that 50 percentage student explore. So this is not only as a um, thing, you can also have it as a mobile app. FET is also available as a mobile app, which a student can download and do any of these activities. So give this as a, instead of telling homework as writing, reading, give them like this, they will also play with this. So this will really excite children. I'm doing some experiment even at home. There is no need now to have the complete lab to do experiment. So government of India has come up with this called O-Labs. <coughs> 
all apps for schools. All apps for schools is for according to the NCRT syllabus, class-wise content are prepared. So you have for all the subjects. You have for English, math, biology, chemistry. So like, like for example, you take any one of this. You will see like according to class, this is all the experiments for class 12. These are the, all the experiments for class 11. These are all for 10. So slowly we are trying to add for class three onwards. Now from nine through 12, you have content, con content. But we are going to start everything slowly so that we come to uh, make children do virtual lab because our schools are not having infrastructure. So can the student install this in their mobiles and try exploring it? So this is not just an experiment. If you want to see any of this experiment to be done in the classroom, you can just click on this. You can see that there will be theory for students to learn a short content about what it is. It also tells how to do the experiment, what all the things are required. Because many times we don't have time to take them to lab and teach all this. So can less can we use this? These are the, it's all for self-learning a child can do by themselves. And it also has an animated content which shows how the experiment has to be done. Okay. So it shows like this is how you have to take one by one with audio. Right now you may not hear the audio, but it shows one by one as an animated content. Now let the student do by themselves. Now this is the lab. I select it, what I'm going to do, follow the previous one. Okay. So I'm not, I'm not a biology person to start with, but you can do step by step similar to the way you do it. And also we watch a video lesson who something explained as a video lesson about with all the things. So this is the actual classroom experiment. We are not able to show this in our classroom. We can just show to the student how it can be done. And then move on to students also need to be tested. What did I learn all this? Can I learn this? Test myself. And then there are additional resources. Can we use such tool? Tell the student previous day before you teach the content, tell them to use this, learn a little and come to the class where you can have more time to discuss. When they read themselves, they'll have 101 questions. Then you will use the classroom for really discussion. So integration of technology is not within your four walls, showing a video and showing PowerPoint. So if we can really tell the students to explore like this. So this is what we talk, students will be engaged. If you show a PowerPoint, they are not going to be engaged. If you just play a video, they're not going to be engaged. It's very important to think about tools which will really engage a student. Students will get interested. Okay, this is how they will do. If the experiment is possible, they can immediately follow the video and do it themselves. Most of the students do not um, so land up in uh, social media engagement because they don't have engagement at home. Parents are late from office. Parents do not have time to spend for a child. Parents are not having time to sit with them to talk. So they are not having friends around sometimes. They have some time to play, but sometimes they are not. You ask any kid, why do you uh, start doing all this engagement? Many children have given in the research that they don't get, like they want to talk, they want to be active but they are not finding a way out. So can we engage a child by giving homeworks like this? So that children will be really engaged. And some of you also have written that we need to interest, bring the interest in kids. How many of you really liked learning social science? How many of you really spend your time learning social science? There would be very less people who can say that I really loved history because as the overall research says, uh, may I request somebody's no, audio is on and may I request them to really stop. Thank you. Thank you. So many times if you see many students feel maths as a tough subject, social science as a boring subject because it talks about lot of years, dates and all that.
But if you take the same kid to a museum, they'll be excited to see a lot of things. I have visited Manipur uh, and Meghalaya and uh, Assam. I have visited all the state museums in your states. When I visit the state museum, I come to know the culture of the particular state. I come to know how life of this particular state is. It's not just today's lifestyle, but what was happening earlier. There was a history in it. It's not just only the history and thing. I have learned a lot of new ferns and fauna. Fawn, by visiting the biological part of your museums. It talks about what is the animal here? What is the plant in this place? It's not one subject. Visiting a field visit to a museum makes a person to get a lot of insights. Who were the poets of the state? How was the literature here? But are we really able to take students to field visits? Especially in Northeast, it becomes so difficult to travel. Even many of us would have not traveled so much to really understand. Even if the children is in the same place where the museum is there, how many of the children would have visited? How many of the teacher, first of all, have this understanding to teach, make a child too excited? Yesterday, one of the teacher was uh, sharing the sharing a post in uh, in a Facebook. I just went well. well it was just morning when I come while we're traveling, I saw a post of a teacher. He is teaching class three students a uh, language Tamil because he belongs to Tamil Nadu. He's teaching his mother tongue Tamil for language class in class three. The lesson talks about uh, the language itself. Okay, it talks about be a Tamilian or being what is Tamil for a Tamilian. That's what it talks about. So he, he has written how did he start the class and it was very nice to see that it is not that Tamil means it is restricted with Tamil Nadu. It is all about language. The language is across the world, language spreads. So that's an idea he has to bring into the classroom. So how, he, how a child can understand that language and Tamil culture is out of Tamil Nadu. So he has started taking them to a virtual tour of Singapore and Malaysia where actually there is a big temple in Malaysia where they celebrate the Tamil festival. And in Myanmar, they have certain Tamil culture which is repeated, which we can't really know. So he has taken a video of it. He has taken a virtual tour to that program. And then he has shown the student of class three who's sitting in a rural part of Tamil Nadu where they would have never seen anything beyond their own village. So he, can we bring that interest in the children? So this I would like to share because it's very relevant to Northeast. Many of you would have faced a lot of uh, situations like this because many times Northeast people write that when you go to airport also sometimes people don't recognize you as an Indian. Sometimes they think that you are a foreigner. It happens with our children. The very first Kala Utsa which happened face to face uh, during the program, one of the Manipuri girl was like it because all of the children have to dress up in their cultural dress. So one of the Manipuri student was dressed up in your tribal costume and uh, <clears throat> basically your costume uh, belonging to your state. And then she was standing there because she danced a uh, Manipuri uh, dance was there after performance. She was in the same tribal costume. So one of this boy from uh, southern part of the country was going and torturing her, saying that, I want a selfie with you. So then as a discipline committee, we intervened and uh, just asked the boy, why are you behind this girl? Why are you torturing her? Why you want to take a selfie with her? It's not good to do this. So that boy told us, Madam, we are meeting some foreigners here. So if we take photo, I will go to my village and tell that I met a foreigner. So I was telling that this girl belongs to Manipur. She's not a foreigner. She belongs to Manipur. And uh, she is like you. She's also a student of class 9 and 10. The boy was very strong. Maybe Manipur is in India, madam. But this girl doesn't belong to Manipur. She cannot belong to India. I was asking why. The boy was telling that, ma'am, the kind of dress she's wearing, Indian women will not wear dress like this. Because that boy do not have any exposure out of his own culture, where he has seen women wearing only one certain, certain type of dress. 
if you wear a little bit sleeve little less it is considered to be a kind of a um, not a good way of dressing up so this kind of children when they move out for college as when they move out of their school that is where they land up in lot of things which we call it like land up they get into excitement when they see it's not just about a boy or girl why because in school we are not able to give an exposure to many things we are already restricted with lot of curriculum syllabus content so how do we really give more exposure to things where we can really build the social skills of students we talk about 21st century schools we really need to build the people uh, skills on that area also so how do we use it so i can share like i'm just showing you one of the tool which is called as google art and culture this is a portal and a mobile app which can help you to excite students to bring them into interest to learn lot of things so uh, like many of us would have not visited ajanta or elora all the archaeological sites of uh, india is available in this particular site and it is as a virtual tour also it's available and uh, uh, across the world many museums are available as um, also a virtual thing so for example this is cave number 20 okay in ajanta so i want to take a virtual tour since i am going to do using desktop you may not feel like a virtual tour but if you can install this app in your mobile and then just do it it will be really looking as a virtual tour so for example i am going to now see what uh, the cave 20 so i can see like how cave 20 looks so when i enter the cave so is there an entrance so this is the entrance right the cave is just one small room one room but in this room you can see there are multiple doors right one two there are all small small rooms but this is all not rooms it's all just a kind of an entry place <clears throat> very small things there is one main place and you can see there what is there inside so you can just increase and see there is a buddha statue <clears throat> right so how is the ceiling is there some architecture in the ceiling there's not much architecture now seen in this cave in this particular room right but when you go to cave number 19 you can see here also there is a buddha statue but the statue is completely different you can see at the top there are so many art you can see at the ceiling there is a lot of again different sculpture so right now i'm showing in the desktop so i'm able to show you like this but when you use your mobile and do it you if you turn left you will see the left one if you turn right you will see the right one the image doesn't rotate but you will turn and just see what is available in this so this is a kind of tool which you can use in your classroom to really excite students okay so when we come to talk about how the very important point which we have to keep in our mind is first thing we need to think whether technology is required don't use technology because it's available don't use technology because you know technology but only use technology when there is a purpose do i need it so when i want to decide that i need to think about all this whether my content needs it to teach new delhi is the capital of india i don't need a technology great technology i can simply tell but if you want the spelling to be in the mind you can use only a powerpoint right just a slide presentation where you write or a flash card which which can be used but if you want to tell delhi has these neighboring states at least you need a india map to show that around delhi these are the thing so you need an image but if you wanted to tell delhi is the most polluted but this is how people are facing problem you can't use images you need to have a video so depending on the content you will decide what type of content is to be used deciding on the learner we need to decide what content to be used sometimes we use technology forgetting the learner in our scenario right in one of the class a teacher used an augmented reality which can be uh, seen like when you scan it scan the picture with your phone it comes to a 3d so when this was used by the teacher all the students were so excited and they really enjoyed it but 
Two days later, one of the child came back and said, sir, any picture is seen with your mobile. I could see it's coming and walking and it's uh, eating. So can you give your mobile? I can also see my grandmother's pictures through that. And my grandmother can also talk with me. A learner of primary level may not understand what is virtual, what is uh, real. So that is where the safety, this will lead a child to get into all this gaming issues, which we are seeing learner at small ages getting addicted to games. They are doing suicide. They are losing money. All this happens because they are not able to differentiate. So we need to be very careful when we are using technology. We, according to the learners, we need to really orient the learners. Is it really required to the suitability of the learner? The last point we need to keep in our mind is about the context. We know very well this is very relevant to Northeast. There are very few people who have computer, laptop, smartphone, and 4G connection. Some people work only with smartphone with 4G. Some people have limited content, limited network. Some do not have smartphone, only television with DTS channel. Some only with radio, no digital device. We have all these combinations. Can we think of when we use a technology for this particular group, we also need to think, what will I do? If you're conducting an online class where only this three group can participate, it is very important to record that online class and share it with the people through TV or through radio or at least give it as a kind of a video to them. If they don't have digital device, then it is very important to have an alternative plan what they should do. That is what NCRT is doing through the alternative calendar. When the alternative calendar was prepared, it is not just technology resources. It has given activities. If students do not have anything, how do they learn the content? Without digital device, also we need to plan. Otherwise, technology itself will become, bring a digital device and make it more difficult to address. So it's very important for us to think about so when we have analyzed all this, we need to design our lesson, keeping few things in our mind. One of the things you have already learned in the last four days that you can use various forms of digital content, different types of digital content. You have also learned that what different forms of digital content, even if you take video as a digital content, there are various forms. I hope you have learned all this in your previous sessions. Right, And you have also been learning last three, four, three days that you can develop a lot of content with different tools, which are free and open source. Right, You have already learned few tools, but very important is to understand how do you integrate? Are you using your digital content? Because this is very important when you develop your e-content. Are you developing that content to be a supplementary material to whatever teacher is going to use? Or is it a complementary resource that can be used to by the teacher in the classroom? Or is it an integrated material where teacher can just teach the lesson with this itself? Or is it an infused content where everything is inbuilt in that? There is no need for, we can't segregate what is role of teacher, what is the technology and all that. Which approach are we going to follow when we create our content? As per the research, as uh, we all know our Bloom's taxonomy, using any digital content as supplementary and complementary will only help to address the lower three levels of Bloom's taxonomy but using integrated and infused approach. When we use this particular tool, we have used this particular tool, right? What approach I have followed? Is it integrated? Is it infused? It is supplementary or complementary. When I use this presentation now in my session, whatever I am spe speaking, right? This visual is supporting you. It's acting as a complementary resource. Particularly this presentation which I'm using is acting as a complementary resource to complement whatever I'm spe speaking, right? But when I did this activity, when I used this activity, it is not just supporting my teaching. 
it was not able to be found it it cannot be split into multiple things it's completely integrated i can say padlet is the technology right there were users and this is the content that popped up this is the content i could segregate this too i say like this is a technology and this is the content so in this particular when i use this tool i am using this approach of integrated approach but when you think of this kind of a simulation or the geogebra ablet which i showed i cannot say fet is a tool because this whole fet is built on your content i cannot segregate a content here content tool all are in an infused manner so when we use tools and content like this the research says we will be able to reach the third three top three levels of Uh, bloom's taxonomy so when we design our ict integrated lesson we have to keep in mind and we also need to keep in mind to blend things not one way don't use only video when you use video bring in the tools it's always not that you record everything can you record a lab activity can you record this smaller simulation along with your voice and then bring it as a complete video it's not that i have to keep only showing presentation and talk so it is very important to blend resources even in your class don't use only one thing don't use only presentation use some activities tell give them some time to explore so blend the resources blend the competencies right now this session if you see this whole session the learning the competency which we look at is at least all of you should be aware of how to integrate ict pedagogy in your teaching learning process but when all of you did this activity you have learned some ict skills all of you know how to click use a link and open a page now those who participated the 73 participants know when somebody shares a link how to click and you know how to give input when a when a, a form is there how you can type your input and submit so these are some of the additional competencies that are blended now in this particular activity which is not the main thing but you can blend competencies you can blend the transaction mode don't always keep it like one way right now somewhere we were having an activity somewhere i was presenting so we need to blend transaction methodologies as i said like blend the learning outcomes don't always focus only on the major learning outcomes think what will be the incidental learning can that can become your learning outcome as part of the sessions so please think about it also think about various methods to be used i could demonstrate something i have used something as demonstration something as just explanation something as an activity so blend the methods and also blend resource persons right now i'm one single resource person talking now but you could see when i asked some inputs you all became a resource person to discuss some of you were giving so you are also becoming a resource person but whenever we do in a holistic way you can make because technology allows you to take resource persons across the country or outside the world to come into your classroom now also blend resource persons these are some of the points which you have been learning every day when you are creating content you need to ensure learners participation think about assessment and think about follow up this is the part which you were learning last four days how to develop the core materials but the very important point to keep in mind is we all have content knowledge we all have pedagogical knowledge because we have learned we have learned psychology we have learned sociology to learn about the learner context everything but the new area is technology we didn't learn a lot about this in our college days or now as a in service teacher it's not possible to teach in one of the training so ncert has created this page just go to cit website <clears throat> under events you will see two things one is webinar when you see this for enabling teachers to daily learn by themselves on a daily basis we have already conducted around 522 sessions till now so you can watch here like for example now i am using some presentation here you all must be seeing the presentation i am not using powerpoint but i am using a software called prezi which is helping me to zoom in the images 
and make it more presentable, right? So you can see in PowerPoint, you can't do this. So I'm using a software now, Prezi. Some of you may think like, I also want to use this in my presentation. So, but there is no time for us to teach you. So you can simply go to this webinar page. You just check for Prezi. Okay. You can see already there is a session, three sessions on Prezi. How to create a presentation and how to prepare a video lesson. So you can just go watch this video. When you watch this video, it gives a complete presentation with step by step. You can see step by step in the for a way how to do it. So you can use this and learn yourself. This is one way for you to build your competency in technology. The other thing which you can also do is coming to this uh, page under events, workshop and training. So if you see here, every month, last week, we conduct a five days online training on through social media, like uh, through YouTube. So it's not mandatory that you need to attend training on the live time. You can watch anytime. Like for example, this week, this uh, month of February last week, a training is already going on on social media. So you will get all the details. What are the sessions? When it is starting? You have to register using this form. Watch the live session. You can see now if you have even missed today's 25th already. So four sessions you have already missed. So you wanted to still learn. No problem. Even you can join today. Register. Go to this playlist. You will find all the four sessions already available. You can watch this at your own time. Come back to the page. Every, every uh, uh, training at the last day, there will be a quiz. So to, today is the last day. At 6, 6 p.m., the quiz link will be updated here. You can just click on the quiz, take up the assessment. Once you get 70% score on the assessment, you will be receiving a certificate for attending this five days training. Then you can submit your forms, uh, feedback also, which you can help us to understand what kind of content you need. Also, you can see all the sessions, videos available with each and everything. So this is how we made all the trainings. Maybe if you have missed the previous trainings, you can still go. So many trainings NCRT has conducted. You can still go here, click on this, come to that particular page, and then start doing your learning. Okay? So this is how we are doing it, and any upcoming program will be here as a detail. So every month, last week, there will be a training session and every month, first Wednesday, there will be a session on cyber safety and security because we are celebrating Cyber Jagruda Divas on every first month, month uh, first Wednesday of the month. So you can always keep participating, keep updating yourself, learn on your own to try to understand the technology perspective. Okay? And always keep learning as blended and this is very important point to take care when you are integrating focus on embodied learning many times when we bring in technology we forget physical activity we forget the effective domain but that's a very wrong thing even when you plan digital activity you should always keep this in mind so that students will be physically effectively and also emotionally and also cognitively growing up together the, the fourth uh, part which we think about is implementation. Whenever you implement any technology tools, when you are developing an e-content, first try out in your class. Do an action research. Whether this e-content helped me. Is it really addressing what it's intended for? Try to analyze the impact. And build the content and share the, your experience. You may tell that this worked like this. It doesn't work. Why it didn't work? So discuss with other people. That is why your SRG group is strong to continue. Please create a content, use it in your class. Try to understand and come and share in the group for discussion until and otherwise when we share experiences, we cannot blame. The last stage is evaluation. Many times when we evaluate, we only evaluate results. We only talk about achievement. But when you use technology, please also test the reaction, whether people like it, how is it making a behavioral change? whether it is impacting anything negatively, how learning is happening, measuring how much blood oozes out when you pierce your finger, 
is different from studying what is the pain the person goes through. So result is like studying and measuring the quantity of blood that has oozen, oozes out when you are piercing your finger. But studying about learning and behavior is like studying what kind of pain a person go through. That makes a lot of difference to understand. Okay, so it's very important for us to follow the ADI process of analyzing, designing, developing, implementing, and evaluation for an effective <coughs> integration of technology in teaching, learning, and assessment. So now let me stop here and take quickly the questions. Yes. Uh, sir, somebody was having a question related to GeoGebra. Uh, can I just take up that question? I saw him typing. Okay, which GeoGebra, ma'am, is it classify or different one? Is the app you're showing in mobile app or PC? Sir, GeoGebra has a mobile app also. GeoGebra can be used live also. If you don't have internet, I was using just from the browser live GeoGebra from website. But internet is not available in all our schools. So you can download the GeoGebra Classic in your classroom and keep it offline and then use it. So all the things like activities which are there can be downloaded and then used it in class. Okay. Uh, any other question? Few participants have raised hand as well. So we can take their queries. Uh, some, okay. Done. Okay. So uh, uh, I, have un I have requested... Mr. So Kuna. can we just uh, permit everyone to unmute? Everyone can be unmuted so they can sure, raise sure. their questions. So quickly we can finish. I have done this. So they can unmute okay. themselves. It's not Preso, it uh, is Ma Preso. Ma'am, yeah. Ma I, yeah. I have an yeah. accent uh, chat box. It's regarding the huh. Preso. It Prezi. is not Preso, sir. It is Prezi. Okay, okay. I'm sorry. Okay. Huh. Yeah, I think you have read that, uh, the chat. That is my question. Uh, what? The benefit. So the when benefit. you use Prezi, it is online tool. But if you don't have internet, you have to use the tool called Sozi. Sozi oh, is the same tool. Little, uh, a little like it takes time for you to learn. But that's a tool which can be used for creating such visual presentation and all. All right. Yeah. Is there any way you can express the benefit or the advantage over Microsoft PowerPoint presentation? The commander? Okay, so like uh, if you see in a Microsoft presentation, any presentation, any PPT, or you use Google, Google slide or Microsoft presentation, see, this is like you, it is like a slide now. Yeah. But you can see I'm just moving one to one, having a holistic thing in a picture. In a PowerPoint, what will I, what you have to do is you have to make everything and link it to a slide. Yeah, yes, if you yes. want this has to happen. So there is a lot of technical work, but in this, it automatically gives you a template to just put your content and keep going. One thing, right? Okay. So okay. the second thing is, like for example, when I sorry, when I clicked on this, like for example, yes, this is yes. the content which I have created. Okay. I've seen, yeah. yeah. But uh, somebody was writing, ma'am, can you make it full screen? All right. In PowerPoint, whatever you write, it cannot be resized in, during your presentation. Yes, I can yes, zoom in exactly. now. Okay? I see, I see. And uh, like, for example, if you're showing a graph, All right. always we are restricted to put your graph within that slide size only. Many times hmm. the graph will not be clear because it's an image. But in this, you can see now, I can, I'm showing this. I can enlarge this image. I'm keeping it very small. Three images I see, I see. for one point. But I'm That's zooming right. in. Okay. Coming okay. out. I'm able to zoom in. Come out. And moreover, when I see something, if you wanted to focus on only one at a time, for example, when I want to focus on only supplementary, I can hmm. hide like this. Move anywhere you want. So Thank right you, now, I yeah, can I understand. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so you like think... This. It's, it's what when you have more of visual presentation. I understand. Use this too. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yes. How have you done it, ma'am? Please give some demo on this. 
Priyakshi, how much time uh, we'll have still? Two minutes, um, I guess. Seven how many we'll finish that time? It's actually time. It was uh, supposed to be 11.15. Yeah. So very simple is uh, how to do Prezi presentation. We have uh, uh, given a complete video in the CIT website where you can go to the webinar page, come to CIT website, events, webinar. You can simply control F and search for Prezi. Okay. There is three sessions in that one session is how to create presentation using Prezi. We have explained completely. So it is 108th session. You can mark it if you would like. You can watch this video. It will give you a complete understanding. Whatever I do, it told you. I have used Mentimeter. You can see how to make activities using Mentimeter. There is a session already. Two sessions are there already in English and Hindi. So you can check out this video also. If you want to know how to use Padlet, Again, there is a session. So we have covered around 100 and 200 plus tools in this 500 session. So according to your need, you want to know how to use online labs, the OLAPs which I showed, just you can see we have done a five days continuous session on online lab. You can just go and try to do it. Okay, so like this, you can keep checking the tools here. Just have a look what is useful for you to learn. Okay. I don't think any other questions, so I can stop here. Yeah. Okay. So thank you so, so much to everyone. Thank you so much, Dr. Angel, for uh, enlightening us with all these resources. And definitely these resources are so interesting that each teacher would like to use them in their actual classroom. So thank you so much once again. And thank you, participants, for participating. And we are going to take a 10 minutes break and we'll return at 11.30 for the next session. So please be on time. Let's meet at 11.30. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. And thank you, uh, Nidhi. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. 